name is Mark and uh, I'd like to personally welcome you to our first installment of uh, the Esquire cocktail series. Just to give you a bit of background on this, um, we at Esquire love a good drink. So we decided to enlist the help of reputable barkeeps around Singapore to create what they would personally think is the Esquire cocktail. What would an Esquire man drink? We are now here at Maison Ikoku and um, with us today is Ethan Leslie Leong, good friend of ours who is the man behind the bar who has created the Esquire number one. And because drinks are only as good as the company you have them with, um, today we have Anthony, our SQ Club member, as well as uh, our man at his best drinks correspondent, correspondent, yes, per se, Zul Andra. Yes. Cheers. 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 So Anthony, how did you find the drink, man? It's good, it's good. It's, uh, it's got a strong smoky taste. Uh, not necessarily my preference for whiskey, more like some of the Indian single malts. Ah, okay. But overall, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, I agree with him. I mean, uh, it's the smoky finish that stays at. I think it's good for people who into cigar or whether you're a smoker or not a smoker. It, it's initially strong and then it kind of hits the back of your palate quite aggressively, but then it smooths or becomes like more subtle quite yeah. quickly, not like some of the other smoky ones. Basically, when you made the drink, right, what was what, what did you have in mind? You, it's, it's actually quite a strong drink, so like for you, when you created it, what did you want to have out of this? Oh, when you first approached me about uh, to create an Esquire cocktail, my perception about thinking to um, something that is um, dry and something extraordinary uh, gentleman. Hmm. A bit like a, gen a very, very, gen a very classic gentleman's drink. That's right. That's why I've chosen the ingredients of uh, La Croix, which is a little bit smoky, and my favorite brand of Blanca, they added a little bit of hint, some hints. Uh, of course, if you are uh, going for more menu version, you can always ask for uh, it without the sugar. Of course, some version, of course. Yeah. Initially, the first, the, 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 like, uh, like the first version of this drink didn't have sugar at all. Right. And um, I, 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 I lost my voice for a while actually. <laughs> talk. So I went, maybe you should add some sugar. As you can tell, I'm quite liking this because mine's almost finished. Okay, you also have these gold little spheres, which I think by the time we started drinking, they were kind of going a little melted off. But these little gold spheres, and I remember asking you, like, is that supposed to aid in the taste of the uh, drink? And, and you were going, and you said to me, a bit, but it's more for aesthetic purposes, right? Yeah, besides the presentation of the final drinks, uh, and uh, it does enhance the uh, flavor of the drinks along the journey of you drinking it. Cool, because cool. Uh, when the ice dissolves and you need more sugar to balance it out. What do you call it again? You call these things what again? I, I call it the golden caviar. Golden caviar. Yeah, the, sure. golden golden caviar. caviar. the one thing I'm finding with this drink is that the smokiness becomes a lot more subtle than more the other, which is kind of unusual for a strong smoke. So, be inclined to have it again. As the, as the ice dilutes, per se. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's, it's starting to taste a lot better. Not that it wasn't good in the first place. Thank you very much for joining us on this installment of the Esquire Cocktail Series. Thank you very much, Leslie, for having us at your bar here. It's fantastic. And Azul, Anthony, pleasure. Um, catch us next month on the next installment of the series. Um, and one last thing to remind you, golden caviar. It did not come out of a fishy's anus.